Okay, today is cabinet day. Just got back from down the mountain. FedEx called, said, hey, we have five skids of stuff for you. I was like, oh, great. So I went and borrowed my neighbor's uh, box truck with a lift gate on the back, which was super handy and super helpful. Thanks, man. Uh, so I've got five skids outside with cabinet parts on them. We're going to unload it, inspect every box. Uh, we have to do that within 12 days, make sure there's no damage. Um, so you can make a claim with the freight company or whatever if you need to. Um, we're going to explain all of that, uh, why we went with what we did, um, how to save some money if you want high-end custom cabinets, but you don't want to pay high-end custom prices. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Cabinet Joint. Let's get to work. We're going to unpack some cabinets. That was a big job. It was like a hundred and some boxes, 1,800 pounds, five pallets. Cabinets are here, some assembly required. Okay, lots to cover in this video about cabinets. Um, actually probably gonna end up doing two or three videos through a little mini series as we build out the kitchen. So as you saw, I just unloaded five skids of about, I don't know, seemed like a hundred boxes. Everything is overpacked and overdone. So we're swimming in cardboard, but that's a good thing because you don't want any of your parts chipped or damaged in freight, in transit. Before we get started, a little bit of a background. I have pretty good experience building cabinets from scratch. I've done it quite a bit. I just didn't have the time to do it on this build because I'm also building the entire house. So I would have enjoyed, I do enjoy it, but I found a solution. So on the one hand, you can go to a big box store and get a pre-made cabinet and finish it yourself, and they're just builder grade, fine, they're fine. Uh, on, an, on the other hand, you can go to a place like Ikea and get the whole system, and it comes in boxes like this with cam locks, and you know, it's a, if you're into that, cool. Uh, a lot of people are overwhelmed by assembling furniture and things like that, so that's my cup of tea, I enjoy doing it, but, uh, I don't, I don't like the quality of Ikea furniture. It's mostly particle board and it's not really permanent furniture. Another option is custom, completely custom cabinets. That's the high end. Uh, had a couple quotes from a couple local cabinet makers, very good cabinet makers. Um, eh, and it was okay, but I mean, knowing what I know about building cabinets and how much it costs and knowing how much they charge, I just couldn't justify it, um, even though they do earn their money, they do a good job, but uh, I'm more of a DIYer and a woodworker, so I found a perfect solution to my little quandary. I don't want to spend the money on super high-end custom cabinetry, and I want quality cabinets. Conestoga Wood Specialties makes quality RTA cabinets. RTA is ready to assemble, just like you would buy at Ikea, ready to assemble, comes in parts. They make all the parts for you, ship them to you, and you put it together and build it out. Build out all your kitchen and finish everything the way you want. Cabinetjoint.com, that's who we're working with to uh, get our kitchen done. We ordered all of our cabinets from them. Uh, we worked with a fantastic designer of theirs named Jamie. We went back and forth three, four, five times uh, to get the final revisions. I'll show you a little screenshot of what our kitchen layout is. She designed it in the same software that I used to design this whole house, so that worked out great. So she did our kitchen design and Cabinet Joint and Conestoga will design whatever you want, just about within reason, down to the 16th of an inch custom, in custom cabinets. You can get it in any kind of wood you can think of. They make them in hickory, 
cherry, alder, maple, walnut. You can get samples. Uh, here's a whole box of samples they sent me uh, in cherry with all the different finishes. Okay, so we picked, uh, actually that's pretty close. That's pretty close to it. Uh, it's a sable glaze on a saddle finish over cherry. And that was the closest that matched our doors. So that went back and forth on that a lot. Um, I had a hard time coming to terms with the cost of cherry, but they're just one of the best woods uh, if you're gonna do stain. And originally I was going to <clears throat> have them make it out of like alder or maybe cherry, but unfinished, and I was gonna stain it to match. Uh, and it's just, we decided just to have them go ahead and do it. Um, but they'll do it whatever you, whatever you want. You can get this stuff unfinished, painted, painted and glazed, stained and glazed uh, with a different sheen, whatever sheen you want. This is a ginger finish with an onyx glaze and a 15% sheen top coat. So when I say custom cabinets, this is the place to order custom cabinets and they'll ship them to you. So like I said, the design process was great. I went back and forth, a few, a few revisions, got some final drawings. They give you a floor plan that calls out all of your cabinets. They give you elevations so you can see kind of what it looks like. You can do a 3D rendering. Um, and anything custom or special, like we have a custom wall cabinet, um, they do a separate drawing just for those face frames. Now the sales process at Cabinet Joint was terrific. I mean, uh, Brian Long is the owner of this place and he has created a huge wealth of information on, available online, a, uh, a video library where he talks about just about anything you would want to know about cabinets. If you have any particular questions about how to assemble a specific type of cabinet, he's got a video on it. They've made a video about what to expect when the truck arrives, how to unpack it, how to sort through all of this stuff so that you don't go crazy. And there are a lot of really good tips in some of his videos. I watched a couple of them last night. His brother, Bob, is the sales guy I was working with, and he was super helpful. So the whole process, great. Anything arrives damaged or whatever, you know, you gotta make sure you note it on the bill of lading. Give them a call, they hook you up, they fix it. You don't have to deal with FedEx or the factory or anything, they just get you a replacement. Um, that's why it's important to, there's a process you have to go through as you do this. So if you find any damaged parts, you immediately take a picture of it, send it off. Like if you have a, a cabinet side that's got a ding in it, they'll ship you a new one in a couple days. So what you see here is mostly cabinet carcasses. Each box has a complete box and a complete carcass in it. All of the doors and drawers and trim and molding and things that we won't need right now uh, until we're like done and hang, you know, finishing, the, all that is in the back room. I don't even want to see it. There's a lot of, lot of doors, a lot of boxes. All right, so this is the, all, everything you see is just the perimeter cabinets of the kitchen. We'll go from there around over to there. Refrigerator, sink, dishwasher, corner cabinets, appliance garage, range, range hood, oven and microwave, wall cabinet, a tall cabinet, and then an end cabinet. That's all this stuff. We still haven't even ordered the other half of our cabinets, which is going to be the island, the uh, vanities upstairs and downstairs, and some laundry cabinets. I wanted to do it in two orders because I needed room, and I wanted to make this video. And um, the second order is all stained in that cherry wood I showed you. So we're gonna get that done. <clears throat> They're typically eight to 12 weeks out right now, but they have two factories. They have one in Pennsylvania. They have one in Kenley, North Carolina, not far from us. They make all the boxes and everything in Kenley, North Carolina, and they make all the doors and drawers and things like that in Pennsylvania. So they have to coordinate uh, a customer's order and they get it shipped and organized. They, they have a really good system. Uh, and it's all like computerized. So for our kitchen uh, perimeter cabinets, we went with a frosty white and all of our other stuff will be stained for the contrast. Originally we were gonna get a glaze, 
here are some more samples they sent <clears throat> when we were trying to make our decision. So here's, here's a white with a glaze on it. You can see kind of a little bit of a different uh, tone there, but that's with a glaze on it. And it does cost about 10% more to have a glaze done. So we decided just to get a base white and we're gonna glaze them ourselves. They have dozens of door profiles, whatever you, whatever you like, and they'll make the doors however you want. You can use a different species of wood for the panel on the inside versus the rails and styles on the outside. We ended up, because these are painted, we ended up going with an MDF uh, inside, and these are maple, I believe. The reason we did that is because when, the, when it expands and contracts and swells and shrinks during the season changes, uh, you'll find cracks once in a while if you don't really control your humidity well. And we, this um, panel doesn't really move because it's MDF. And since it's all painted, it doesn't matter, so you won't see it. With our wooden ones, island and all that, they will be all solid cherry and stained. Uh, the other good thing about ordering and assembling and installing these this time of year, it's almost October, temperatures are coming down, humidity is going away. Today I think it's 35% humidity. I would not want to be doing this in the middle of July, uh, having to acclimate this for a couple weeks and then constantly fighting the humidity, because, especially since we don't have our HVAC turned on yet because we don't have our permanent power. It's a perfect time of year to be doing this. So those are the doors. Okay, so when your order shows up, it comes in a big tractor trailer, you need a way to offload pallets. This kitchen, five pallets. Um, you'll have a packing list, you'll have a skid bill of lading, all this stuff tells you exactly what's in your order and everything is labeled. So if you just go find each label, check it off the list, make sure you have everything you need. Um, and that's just the boxes. So when you open a box, there's a, a main list of all the parts and each box has its own list. So for example, one of these boxes back here is a cabinet case, meaning the sides, the back, the bottom, and the top, uh, and it'll have its own list. So the other key thing that I learned by watching one of Brian's videos on cabinetjoint.com is work one box at a time. Don't go opening all this stuff, trying to organize doors and drawers and pieces and parts. Inevitably, it'll get mixed up and you'll have parts of one cabinet going into another cabinet. You'll screw up and you'll be mad at yourself. So open a box, build that cabinet, move on. You know, and put the, like I said, put the doors and drawers and all that out of sight, out of mind, because you won't mess with those till the very end. This is pretty simple. Because of the way they manufacture their cases, they, they pre-route everything with you know the grooves, they put splines in the tongues, and it fits one way. You glue it, you pin it, make sure it's squared up, move on. You only need a few tools. Brad nailer with some one to one and a quarter inch pins, brad nails, you know, these. Uh, you need a rubber mallet to pound stuff together gently, wood glue, and then kind of just miscellaneous stuff, like a tape measure if you're anal. I'm gonna use some specialty tools that uh, Northern Tools sent me. Uh, now that they sell Rockler woodworking tools, we're going to use a couple of these and uh, I'll get into that a little bit later once we start assembling a box. Don't need to do it with this type of uh, product, but for building uh, cabinets from scratch, like if you get just get a sheet of plow and start making sides in the back, this will help you square things up and stay on track. And finally, before we get started building a box, get your work area set up. Back here I have my little desk table thing. This is my construction office. This is gonna be out of here soon. The reason everything is in here under the loft is we're about to start hanging the ceiling tomorrow, uh, two days from now. So I wanted everything clear of there because we're gonna have to build scaffolding, get up there, and that's gonna be a project. But I also wanted to get ready to assemble cabinets as soon as they're done. The key thing for a cabinet assembly is creating a, a work surface that is a comfortable height because you're gonna be working, building boxes. You don't wanna be on the floor, you don't wanna be on your knees, you don't wanna be bending over because you're gonna be doing production here. This piece of scaffolding rolling on wheels is perfect. I got it down as low as it'll go so I can set this here. I've got these uprights if I needed to, I could lay sides and parts up against it. Um, 
I got cardboard put down and as we build, as we open each box, there's gonna be stuff wrapped in thin foam. We lay that down, we'll put the face frame down, build everything on top of the face frame, pick it up, move on. This is the ideal setup for assembly. Okay, I think that's probably gonna do it for our introductory video and our kitchen overview before we get too far in the weeds. Um, next video though, we're gonna dive right into assembly and show you uh, different types of cabinets and how you assemble each one in a little bit more detail. So if you're interested in that, definitely stay tuned for the next video in this series and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.